Every day is going to be something different. Most days it runs through, no problem. So today, however, had a little bit of an issue, but we're good now. Everything's rocking and rolling. All right, let's uh, let's jump in. Let's talk about this uh, this first topic. You brought it to my attention. It was incredibly interesting. So I kind of want you to take the lead here. It's a uh, it's a story <laughs> that NBC Sports put out uh, discussing D Ford and Nick Bosa, and I I want you to I want you to kind of fill me in. Yeah, just talked about how the brotherhood of these two guys is coming along. I mean, they they are about as different as two people could be. Um, you know, we we live in a world of that's that right now, especially with what's happening in Min, Minnesota, and, uh, and 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 our thoughts are there. Um, and once again, our country is going into chaos. Yeah, we're divided uh, again. Yeah, because of because of craziness, and we are divided. And race divides so much, but not just race, but also like where people come from. Yeah, and you've got you've got Nick Bosa, who was born in a in a different status in life than D Ford, and and they were raised different, and they were brought up different, and now they're on the team. And D Ford's talking about how you know it was his responsibility to take him under his wing, kind of teach him to be a professional because the kid's a hell of an athlete, and we need him, and and we need him to know how to be great uh, and, and do these things. And he talked about some of the Chiefs players that taught him when he got there. And one of the things he said was you don't have to be friends with these people outside of work, outside of the field, outside of the facilities to, to work together. And he said, but in spite of our differences, we have become friends. He used the word brotherhood and, and it, that it just, it just made me feel good. They never really talk about the racial divide. They never talk about any of that, but you know who these two individuals are. And, and then you read it and you talk about how this game has brought them closer. The work that they do together brought them closer. And it just, it just made me feel good to know, you know what? Every black guy doesn't hate every white guy in this country right now. And every, cause this report came out today. I don't know when the interviews actually took place. Um, the, the, the report came out today. The story came out today. Every black guy, white guy doesn't hate every black guy today. And, and we just need more of this, of just, let me work next to you. Let's fight the common enemy over and over again. I'm going to push you. You're going to push me. And we're going to try to make each other better. And uh, and it just, I, I don't know, it stood out to me as I wanted something feel good. And I wasn't expecting it, but that's what I got. Yeah. Well, you and I have talked a lot on this show. Like, you and I, we have uh, varied differences of opinions. And yes. it's good for the show. Like, ha- having... Having an echo chamber is not good for anybody. You don't grow from that. You you need different philosophies brought in to help you grow uh, as a person uh, in your knowledge, etc. And stuff like this is uh, is is good to hear. You know, it's it's you don't get enough of the the feel good stories, and this is definitely one of them. So I I haven't gotten to read it all the way through it yet, but uh but I read a little bit of it, and you know it's just uplifting. You know, it's that's, just football, okay? Yeah. And this doesn't cover any of the stuff going on, but you know when this happened, these other things happen, and we don't live life in a bubble. I think D goes out of his way to to talk about how they've embraced one another more than he would have if things were just happy and merry in our country and, and we had none of these issues. Um, and maybe I'm reading more into it than I should. I don't know. But, but it was something that I thought, man, this made me feel – like there's hope that there's goodness in the world still uh, of people who see the world very, very different. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and whatever. So, you know, that, that, that was what that was. You you talked about how being different is, is what drives us. And it, it, it absolutely is. Tell one little quick story when I was in management and I had to hire someone to work basically alongside of me that, you know, it would be me and them, as equals as much as we could be running, running the things. And uh, I, I went out of my way to hire somebody who was very different from me. And, and when push came to shove, I just basically asked her when offering her the job was, or you're somebody I feel like I can fight with. I need somebody to fight with me because if I'm the only person carrying everything here, I'm going to make up, make mistakes. And I need somebody to check me and say, are you sure that's the best thing for us to do? You can't be afraid to do that. And we worked unbelievable together. Yeah. I, I think that happens or it would happen much more frequently if uh, if people didn't surround themselves with 
yes men and everything else, right? I 100% think the problem that we have in politics, to get a little political, is both sides surround themselves with only people that all agree. Yes. I, I think that if if I ever, if I was president, I assure you, my vice president would be very different than me. And the country might not like it, but I need someone to challenge my ideas because my ideas aren't always right. Yeah, nobody's And I right. only represent a portion of the country that agrees with me, but I have to represent everyone. Yeah. And so I need someone else to take up the slack of what I'm missing. Yeah, I agree with That's you. That's important. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said, I wish more good news like that would come out. Uh, the media doesn't usually cover them because they don't get views. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's that's the problem is, yeah, if it, if it bleeds, it leads, and that's just the way the news media worry about things. Uh, Huey said, I love being the devil's advocate, and it drives people nuts all the time. Um, or he said, at times, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, when, you, when you question things, yeah, it's going to drive people crazy. But it, it gives you a better understanding of what you're trying to do. It helps you in the long run uh, be able to explain why you're doing the things that you're doing. Like that's bottom line business, right? You make sure that you are making the best decision. If you can't defend what you are doing against somebody that's just asking questions, it, maybe you need to rethink what you're doing. That's you know? it. So, so my my tagline was always support people, challenge ideas. If I'm challenging your idea, I'm not challenging you. I'm challenged the way you think. Yeah. I d- don't fight me for fighting me. Okay, I want you to win because a win for you is a win for me. I want you to want me to win, but but we got to challenge each other's ideas constantly because if we can poke holes in our own ideas and find ways to sure them up or 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 fill them, then then we can have a stronger plan going forward. That was just the way I always saw business. Nobody taught me that, by the way. I it just makes sense in my brain, and it was the only way I knew to. To be because I know I didn't know what I was doing when I was thrust into a management position. I had no training whatsoever. I was just hired. Here, you did a really good job at the last job, so we're going to put you in this job. That doesn't mean that I'm qualified for this. Let's figure this shit out. And it's it's what you and I do on a daily basis with the show. Even for something as simple as trying to come up with topics that we think are going to be good for the show, um, we each come in with ideas. We discuss whether or not they would be good for us to discuss on the show. And then you go from there. I mean, it's one, is it going to be good for views? Does it matter if it's good for views? Is it actually good content? Is it worth talking about? I mean, all these different things that go into us doing this show, uh, it's the same thing, right? You're just bringing different ideas to the table. And if you want to talk about something, you got to be prepared to defend it. Now, you and I, we've got a really good relationship anyway, so we can actually yeah. discuss these things. But, yeah, uh, for, for the most part, we do a lot of the same stuff. And, and when you're working with anybody, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, with these two, it was just it was good to see something like this, two people from incredibly different backgrounds that work together that actually do get along and don't have the same ideas all the time, but yeah, they I get along. I can't imagine that they have the same ideas. No. I mean, uh, one is— Now, D4, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't been very public about his political stances or, or things that he, he agrees with. The other guy, Nick Bosa, is very— open about his political stances and alliances. Yes. Um, you know, just the fact that one is vocal and the other one is not tells me just the mentality of their differences. 